just by me to please do another more in-depth and detailed teaching on this very controversial topic that we are about to discuss today. And today, our topic is titled The Competing Spiritual Spouse. The Competing Spiritual Spouse, I, I admonish you, uh, I would love to advise you to get a friend, get a family member or whomever to tune in. They definitely want to listen to this particular teaching as we explore the Word of God and extracting the necessary nuggets which God consider the knowledge of God that is the only thing that can release us from the things that has hindered us throughout the course of our lives. Again, I'm so happy, so happy to be back here. Last week was excellent as we were dealing with the uh, uh, cultural uh, demonic activities that we were exposing and also denouncing and tearing down those evil covenants again that has placed hooks in us and anchored us to a place spiritually that became the source of why we could not go uh, physically. Uh, I was kind of active this week. I did a teaching a couple days ago with a wonderful, beautiful person in the name of Telcha Edinburgh. Yes, all the way in from California. And she has a program on uh, YouTube. I strongly suggest you go and visit her channel. I think it's called the T of NPD. That's it. Right. That she speaks specifically about narcissism as well as narcissistic folks, all the same. And she had invited me on Thursday to uh, her audience and her platform to bring it from a spiritual perspective like I normally do. Uh, I'll be posting that video up on my thing today here also. Uh, for those of you who are listening right now, you can also find me on my uh, Apple app as well as the Android app. You can just go into your uh, app store and download Kevin L.A. Ewing and you'll be able to see me live, and plus you'll have access to all of my free material, all of my video teachings, audio teachings, all of my writings, my blog posts, dream interpretation, prayers, all of that you will find in that one spot there where everything will be at your uh, fingertips. As you would know, my largest platform <coughs> excuse me, is uh, YouTube which I, I think currently have a total of 215 or 216,000 subscribers or followers and the folks that are joining every day. Uh, again, I admonish you to go over the videos, read the blogs, listen to the audios, because many of you write me basically the same thing that I'm teaching repeatedly, repeatedly. And you write me and ask me the same questions over and over that I've already and repeatedly included in my teachings and I've done it already. And I do not encourage people because many people write me and even put on my various comment section on my social media uh, channels. And they would say, can you interpret this dream for me? So and I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it because I'm not gonna encourage you and feed you in your laziness. I have ample material. You are not charged a seed. There is no membership fee. There is nothing that is a hurdle or a partition between the information that I have in you. It is totally up to you clicking a couple keys on your computer and having direct and complete access. The reality is there's absolutely no reason why you would have to reach me to be totally honest with you because all of the information is there. I am not doing anything to keep it away from you. All right, everything in terms of what I do that I pay for, which I'm assisted by those who assist me. There's no demand on anyone. There's no one asking to sow a seed, none of that. Because as God has proven himself repeatedly, that if I do what he has ordained and called me to do, then all of the other details he, was, he will work out. And he has done that, and I must say he has done it in abundance. So again, there is no barrier. There is nothing stopping you. If you are serious about deliverance, if you are serious about being set free from the invisible anchors in your life and shackles, then you will do whatever it takes 
to actually go and have that done. Okay, so there's no excuses. You can interpret your dreams if you follow the principles that I give biblically. It's not my opinion. I'm giving you uh, the word of the living God. I posted my video last night on my uh, assignment there to Nigeria. I posted that video late last night. I was having some difficulties putting it up, but I finally got it up. So I put it up there, and some of you would have made some comments that I instantly deleted and I instantly block you. Now, let me tell you why I did it, and I will continue to do it. I've been repeating this over and repeatedly. You will not, you will not come on my platform and change my narratives and try to cause confusion and pull away from what I'm teaching. I will not allow no clown to come and do that. So what I do is I employ and deploy the delete and block ministry which are in full effect when people like yourself come and try to, to only the devil causes confusion, all right? I was doing a teaching on marriage and so on, and some clown came on about I'm teaching on how to, to marry multiple times and divorce, and I never said none of those things, and I will never allow you to plant such demonic seed in someone's head and putting, pushing your narrative and calling it mine. So if you try to access my information and you realize that you cannot reach or see Kevin anymore, no, there's nothing wrong with your computer. There's no bug. There's no virus blocked play with you. What I do is very serious. I put a lot of time into what I do, and I make it very clear from the get-go. What I give you is not my opinion. Like today, I will give you multiple scriptures. You don't have to agree with me. Go and read it for yourself. I made it easy for you. I brought the scripture. So you go and read it. And whatever you come up with, that on you. But you will not come on my social media venues where many people follow the teachings. I will not allow you and your daddy Satan to put evil seeds in those who seek truth head. Now you had your years of doing church and all that other stuff, and you were very... Uh, good with your traditions where you put guilt on people and feed them your version of the gospel to steal and thief their money. You were successful up until this point. And thank God for free speech, okay? Just how nobody interrupted you when you were spreading your false gospel and your demonic seed so and miracle, whatever garbage, that will not happen here. So the minute I sense you coming, I will be right there to employ and deploy the delete and block ministry. Okay, let's be clear here now. Okay, now I know what you can say, oh, the minute you disagree with him, he, yeah, you could say that. Let, I encourage you. You wouldn't be saying it on my pages. <laughs> I tell you that. I will never violate your freedom of speech. You could talk all the dung you want, and don't matter. You, I refuse to let any of Satan's children invade my space. I don't come on your space for this very reason. You teach what you believe, how you interpret it, that on you. What I'm giving the people is the scriptures. So at the end of the day, what that means is that, Kevin, even if they don't believe you, you gave them the scriptures. Now, they go read it, and they determine for themselves <laughs> very, very simple. But I will not, will not, I will not. Now, others do it. Others do it, but I would, it will never happen yet. I put too much time and effort into people into my uh, teachings, and I've seen hundreds, thousands of people from the length and breadth of this world delivered not through or by Kevin, but Kevin being the conduit of the gift of teaching that God has given him. It has opened the eyes of people and break them from their traditional spiritual shackles that has kept them back in the places they were going to lay all the rules on them and they still never prospered. They still never got ahead. They still never advanced. And facts, I'm listening to me right now. 15 years under a particular ministry, under Christianity, whatever, and you follow all the rules. You do the Sabbath. You didn't put on no makeup. You weave them to institute their rules. The women know wear pants. They cover their head. The men can't wear short sleeve shirt this and that and that, all of the superficial outward appearance 
and nobody ever considers the heart that you could be well dressed, look super Christiany, but your heart is full of lust, hate, bitterness, unforgiveness, pride, greed, all of those things we can't see. But you're still on the pulpit, you're still sitting in the front row, you're still wearing a big hat, look like some saucer. Yeah, you got all of that. And everyone who is superficial like you see you, my God, look at Sister Jones. Jesus, this woman is a woman of God. Why is she a woman of God? Why? Huh? How much souls did she win? Huh? Who did she preach to? Who could come and say, boy, ever since we encountered this woman, our lives changed? No. You call her a woman of God because she followed the tradition of being in church every Saturday or Sunday, every conclave, by the park, the suits, and uh, aid the children's school fees and all of that. And because of that, according to your policy, got nothing to do with the word of God, he or she is a man or woman of God. Kevin come to shut that foolery down from day one. And I don't care what you think, not only you. I come to give the word of the living God. If you don't like it, then get saved. Because clearly you don't have the Holy Spirit. And clearly you are absent of being sanctified. <laughs> so I strongly suggest you come to know sweet Jesus. There's room at the cross for you. The devil has fooled you for too long. Come and give your life to Christ. Okay? Now, because I have so much information to cover today, I'm going to jump right into it. All right? Now, today, like I would have said earlier, we are teaching on the competitive spiritual spouse. And again, like I would have said earlier, I've had many, many emails pertaining to this. I've done literally hundreds of counseling sessions primarily by Zoom and Google Meet, all of those other face-to-face -face interactive stuff uh, where I would have counseled people on these things as it relates to relationship and marriages and these consistent negative patterns in that particular area of their life that has caused them not to go forward in life. So today I said I'm going to do a complete and detailed teaching giving the core. Now, many people out there, including some believers, they don't believe in a spiritual spouse. Now, spiritual spouse is also known as spiritual husband, spiritual wife, marine wife, mermaid wife, all this other stuff, uh, incubus, succubus, all of this other stuff. So you'll have people who would say, show me that in the Bible. And I agree. I, I, you know, I promote that. But I also say to you, while something may not be worded specifically in the Bible, such as a spirit spouse, that doesn't mean the concept of it is not there. So like I've been saying to you of my teachings, I said, listen, if someone ever come to me and I say to them, okay, now prove it to me from the Bible. Here is what I mean. Show me exactly what you're saying in scripture, whether it's there verbatim, or the only thing I will accept other than that is the principle that governs that. See, because principles don't change. And principle is going to govern something whether it's good or bad, black, white, fat, ugly, doesn't matter. The principles will be the base in which whatever that is, is standing on. So again, if you could show me the principle in which your the argument or your revelation is based on, then you have my full undivided attention. The day, and I can tell you this now, the day you say to me what pastors say, apostles say, this one say, and you have no scriptural reference. And I said, you show me, just show me something. Give me a scripture something. Then I will no longer engage you because at that point, the conversation shift from where we was trying to establish a point to idolatry. And I don't know that. So go back to your idols and get your answers from there. But if you are willing to listen to scripture, I will be more than happy to entertain whatever it is that you have to say. So in this particular teaching with these spiritual spouses, we're talking about invisible beings that you cannot see, obviously, because they are invisible, but they're very much active. They're very much intelligent with feelings, and they can speak and do all of these other things. And in fact, they do that in an even more extravagant or greater level. The only difference is, is that they do not have a a shell or a suit like we do, such as this physical body. So what I'm going to do, because we will not find the word spiritual spouse, spiritual wife, 
spiritual husband, incubus, succubus in scripture, then what I'm going to do is show black marker and cross it on and say, you don't believe that because that is what you're basically uh, going to be saying. Now, three scriptures I want us to jump on initially. And it's going to give the, uh, it's going to be the forerunner in terms of what we're going to be teaching here today. A person with a spiritual spouse, in essence, is a person that has a, a spirit attached to them. If it's a man, it'll be a spirit wife attached to him. If it's a woman, it'll be a spirit husband. This is indeed an actual being that is primarily influencing this person as well as those who approach them that could cause them to go to the next level in their lives as it relates to relationship, all right? Particularly the relationship that could manifest in marriage because these are people are challenged most. This spirit will manifest itself in many ways, many ways. And I will go into many points on that today and give you a lot of the ways that they operate in. But one of the primary evidence that you will know that this spirit is existing in a person, it is they are normally accompanied with the spirit of rejection. Where the person feel rejected, they have no confidence, their self-esteem is extremely low. And the evidence of this is that people that they would date or some prospect that would, could lead to marriage, all of the relationships uh, in such an uncanny way uh, end abruptly without any form or seeming or apparent reason. And the victim of these spirit spouses will see a consistency in such relationships in their lives. It is almost as if no matter who they get involved with, they will see this exact same pattern where everything take off. They fall in love, they date, they travel, they buy stuff for each other, they celebrate whatever. I mean, they really, really until one day, one day, not knowing that this is a spirit behind this, the spirit spouse will now say, okay, time is up. I need my physical human being back. So now that spirit will influence the body who doesn't have the spirit spouse. It would cause them to just be turned off from the one who has the spirit spouse. Or the one who has the spirit spouse could become totally disinterested in the other party who doesn't have the spirit spouse. But in any event, it is the visible spiritual spouse that's mastermining such consistent behavior as the victim would have noted throughout the course of the relationships that they have had. Okay? So we're going to go into some rules, first of all. Now, what I'm about to give you, if you have this spirit, is the necessary biblical knowledge that is needed the necessary biblical knowledge, and as a result of this knowledge, if you apply it, now you will be able to at minimum begin the process of breaking this evil pattern in your life to allow you to really now enjoy the life God has given you, all right? Now, my favorite scriptures, uh, Hosea 4 and 6. Hosea 4 and 6 says to us, God says, listen, my people, you're my people, you're my children. And, and as your God, and the myriad of promises that I have here in the word, you should be prospering in every area of your life. However, you're not. And that's not normal if you're a child of God. That should not be. Particularly if you're now years in the drought or in this hole. So God says to his people in Hosea 4, and 6, he says, listen, let me tell you why you're perishing. You're not perishing or failing or being destroyed because you don't look good or you're not attractive to other people or you're foolish or ignorant or, or whatever. He said the reason or the core of why you're not getting ahead in life, a believer of course, is because you lack knowledge or information that had you had it and apply it, you could by default release yourself from the invisible forces that's keeping you back or putting impediments in your life physically 
that is by default causing you not to go forward physically. I hope you listen to me. So he says, you are perishing because you lack knowledge. And then he goes on to say, because you have rejected knowledge. And that got me because he's saying, because when I first read that part without getting to the, the second part of that statement, I thought the knowledge was never available. But like right now, like what I'm doing, it's being once again issued to you. But such impediments as traditions, uh, church policies, what pastors say, what this, what everybody else say except the word of God you're referencing. Except the word of God you're seeking for the keys to release you from this prison. He said, because you've rejected knowledge, I've, I've rejected you. I can't work with you no more then because the information that I'm giving you, you choose not to believe. You choose to run with somebody else's version or interpretation or ideology or philosophy or their organization policy. You trump all of that above the word of God. So he says, you know what? Guess what? Okay, because I've offered you this knowledge and you reject it, I will also reject you. I ain't going to say to you no more. Isaiah 5.13. Again, my people, the people of God. You are in captivity. You are in spiritual bondage. You, you cannot get married. And every time you think you're there, you've been engaged at least 66.9 trillion times. That, that minimum, right? And every last one of them ended the same way. The man just pick up and leave. Two weeks later, he married to somebody else. The woman just gone. Lose all interest in you. But with that same level of the dating process and whatever you all had, she moved in another relationship and, and then even start from the bottom and take it from there. Here you are again in your car, crying on the beach, somewhere weeping, crying, Lord, oh Jesus, Lord, please help me, Lord. Turn it around, Lord. Deliver me, Jesus, Lord. Oh, the devil is, ain't no devil. No devil. Now, this one time I can tell you, stop lying on Satan. This have nothing to do with Satan. And have everything to do with your inability to go to God, word, and apply it. You hate it. If the man got home for free, with you. So Hosea, sorry, Isaiah 5 and 13 says that my people are gone into captivity. The word captivity means restriction, bondage. Then he tells you why, and it is the same reason why it's stated in Hosea 4 and 6. He says, my people are going into captivity. Why? Because they lack knowledge. No. Uh, just as a side note, I was watching this, uh, this circus program on YouTube last night. I was supposed to be some preacher, I suppose. And he came in fiery. And of course, he does the average things to to get people right up. God is getting ready to kill your enemies. Oh, the enemies you see today, you will see no more. They hate you because they jealous of you. But I hear God and I say, look at this. Where's the red nose? Because that's the only thing he's missing right now. Could someone stick a red nose on this clown? No scripture. He ranted for at least, and I, and I punished myself listening to this guy almost an hour. I, I know what wrong with me. But I'm, and I'm happy that I listened because I sat, it, I sat there and had a front row seat to Ricky and Balaam circus right there. And he's walking through the crowd. The man, quote, he ain't quote, no scripture. All he had was riddles and what God is going to do for them. He ain't tell them they need to repent. He ain't tell them they need to get their life together. He ain't, need to tell, he ain't tell them they need to get confident in the word of God. He ain't say to them that the word of God is your, uh, this is the core of what you need to overcome these evil for none of that. Everything the man said was all superficial, all fleshly. It is all about riling people up who refuse to change, but just want things to change for them. That was what it's all about. So I sat there saying, wow, man, this guy, this guy, this guy would make a good sales agent. So, of course, primarily the women in there, gl speak it, glory, Jesus, oh, Lord, this man on fire. Preach. Man, I watched them take out their little flag and rag, and they just fanning him past them. No scripture, no scripture, no scripture. Not only thing what I didn't like what he did in terms of his performance, because his performance was riveting for the average clown. But what I what I didn't what I was looking for was some backflips. I didn't see none of that. I didn't see I was I was looking around in the church when he was moving the camera. See, they had me chandelier. Let me see him swing on that. Because so far, in terms of his performance, was pretty much good. I like that in terms of 
he came to perform, not the, nothing to do with God. And I'm watching these people again, rejecting the true knowledge of God, but committed to pageantry, committed to these clowns who read one scripture in their entire life, jump on a mic and talk utter foolishness. There is no change. There is no uh, uh, command to repent, none of that. And these same people, 10 years from yesterday when I saw that, if they're alive, they'll be in the same spot doing the same thing over and over again. None of that ain't bondage. Tell me, please, someone tell me what bondage is. So the Bible says in Isaiah 5 verse 13, he says, my people, Kevin, they've gone into captivity. They, in other words, they are spiritually incarcerated. Now, they believe that because they can move about freely and they're not in a prison or being held captive physically, they figure the scripture don't apply to them. But what they're missing is the spiritual connotation of what the scripture is saying. You, my people, you are gone into captivity, meaning that spiritually you are held captive. Hence, if you are spiritually held captive, you cannot progress efficiently and effectively like you should, as if you weren't. So the fancy screaming and shouting, the selling of the oils, the spraying of foolishness in your mouth, the, the drop kicking you in the God house, all of this, none of this equates to the knowledge that is needed to free you if you apply it. So Proverbs 11, verse 9b, what does it say? Through knowledge. I saw, boy, listen, I love this scripture. The day I came in contact with this scripture, God, I mean, my eyes bust wide open. It says, through knowledge, through the word of God, through his rules, his laws, his principles, his ordinances, his precepts, if you, Kevin... If you put these things into practice, Kevin, hear me and hear me well, it's going to be through this knowledge shall you, Kevin, the just, be delivered. You are going to be, hold on, Jesus, now, hold on, hold on, hold on, back up now, you're going too fast. Mr. God, are you saying to me, I don't need the miracle oil? I don't need the miracle juice. I don't need the miracle glove. I don't need the miracle hat. I don't need the miracle spring water from the hills of Russia. I don't need to turn around and tell my neighbor whatever nonsense they say. You're telling me all of what I've been watching and seeing, I don't need to sow a crossover seed, a special seed, a seed to show God I love him. You're telling me, let me read it again. Proverbs 11 verse 9, because it may be some clauses there. Through knowledge shall, no might, the just be delivered. So I will be delivered if I not only acquire this knowledge, Kevin continually speak about this in the Bible, but if I apply it, are you saying automatically then, or by default, deliverance will come? Yes. I know, man. That's too easy. No, no, no. Are you sure I ain't got to see it? I will so see it. I hear what you said. I will so see it. Okay, Kevin. You are so seed. How long have you been sowing seed? How long have you been paying tithe? How long have you been following the patterns of, okay, you are a woman, you can't wear pants, you can't wear makeup, you can't wear uh, gold because they said that's idolatry. You, okay, you followed all of that. How much have you achieved since committing to their rules? I, I didn't hear you. You were very vocal earlier. What did you say? I can't hear you now. You haven't achieved. I know. You know why you haven't achieved? Because just, just like the Bible says, because you have rejected knowledge, I have also rejected you. Mighty God. Boy, I love the Lord. Yeah, I love it. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to show you scriptures, because we're going to build a foundation very quickly, how real spirits are and how, how they function. This is necessary because what this is going to prove, if you believe in the Bible, that spirits are real. And if you're saying they are not real, then if you believe in God 
And if you believe in there's a devil, then, then I'm confu you're confusing me because there's spirits. <laughs> so if you say God, if you don't believe in no spirit spouse and this foolish spirit, spirit of jealousy and this uh, Jezebel spirit, all these things these church people are making up. Okay, okay. If you don't believe in none of them, you don't believe in none of them, right? Then when you speak or mention God and you say, oh, the devil busy. Okay, who are you talking? Is there, is there a person named God? Or is a person who you know is the devil? Because based on your statement, you don't believe in a God. You don't believe in those things, right? So let's quickly let's quickly look at some scriptures to bring your nonsense to end, right? Now, primarily, we know the purpose of spirits because they are disembodied, meaning that they don't have a physical body. The only way they can have power over you is through their not only their influence on you, but you accepting their influence. In other words, you coming in agreement with what they're suggesting to you. But the primary job is, no matter what type of spirit they are, whether it's a, a spirit wife, spirit husband, whether it's a spirit of infirmity, spirit of jealousy, whether it's a, a good spirit, a haughty spirit, a loving spirit, in any event, the core purpose of them, because they have no legal authority in this earth outside of mankind, uh, partnering with them. Their job is to influence. I want this to be at the top part of your head right now because this is going to be the key going forward. So the spirit influences just like you are a person. And the Bible says don't fornicate. And you feel the strong desire. You have to fornicate. You have to have sex with someone. What is doing that? You can't see it. No. What you're thinking, though, these are my thoughts. This is what I want to do. This is the. This is me. The reality is this is a spirit influencing you heavily. And as a result of that, it's just waiting on you to accept the offering. Once you engage in the act, you are coming in covenant with them, giving them the right to facilitate further their specific purpose in your life. So if it's a spirit of jealousy, if it's a spirit of hate, if it's a spirit of, of sexual immorality, whatever, the key here is, is that if I could get this person to receive this uh, suggestion that I can take it from there, all right? So you could write this down in uh, in uh, 1 Kings 22, verses 19 to 23, right? 1 Kings 22, I know I use the scripture quite a lot because it really, really brings home the point in regards to the influence of spirits. And in this particular case, we're talking about evil spirits. So verse 19 of 1 Kings 22, right? And this is, of course, again, this prophet Micaiah having a vision that he is now relaying to King Ahab and King Jehoshaphat. He says, and he said, which is Micaiah the prophet, hear thou before, hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. So this is a vision, right? Meaning that he is fully awake, fully conscious. And this is what he's experiencing, what he's seeing that nobody else could see, all right? So he says he saw the Lord, okay, sitting on his throne, and all of the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right and on his left. Verse 20. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade? Circle that word. Who shall persuade? Who shall encourage? Who shall uh, coerce? Who shall motivate Ahab? That he may go up and fall or die at Ramoth Gilead. And one said to the manor, and another said to another. So, so far. The hosts of heaven are not physical beings. In fact, in this vision, outside of Micaiah giving this, everyone, God sitting on his throne, the hosts of heaven on his, on his left and right, God speaking to them, these are all spiritual beings, all types of spirits, good and bad. So God is saying to the hosts of heaven, good and bad, which one of you will go and influence, I tell you that's what spirits do, which one of you will go and influence Ahab to go to Raymond Gilead, which he will lose his life? So the Bible says each one of the hosts of heaven, which are spirits, are now consulting with one another. Would you go? I want to listen now. One of the spirits from among them came forth. So the Bible said they came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, what did this spirit say? What is a spirit? A spirit is an invisible entity. It is a disembodied entity, meaning it does not have a fleshly suit like us. We are all spirits housed in this fleshly body. This is what makes us legitimate on the earth. So the Bible is saying that 
this disembodied being, a spirit, no one could see it. It says that he comes forth and said, I will persuade him. Because that's what they do in their in the, the, the initial state of what they do to mankind. They influence. So verse 22 says, and the Lord said unto him, who is this him? The spirit. He said, wherewith or how will you persuade him? How will you encourage him? How will you convince Ahab to go? Now watch this. Verse 22, and the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, just a spirit, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouths of the prophet. So this one spirit is going to convince the 400 physical human beings, which were the false prophets of Baal, and convince them collectively to tell Ahab, we saw in the spirit where you are going to be victorious when you go to fight in Raymond Gilead. Well, my God, you all hear this? There was no physical being standing to their air telling them this. They all felt that they were hearing from the Lord or whomever they were hearing from, and none of them realized it was a spirit influencing them. So verse 22, 1 Kings 22, And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all the prophets. Uh huh. And he said, which is God, Thou shalt persuade, meaning go forth, and prevail, also go forth and do so. Verse 23, now therefore, behold, the Lord had put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord had spoken even concerning them. So you see, when it says the Lord did it, it means that he gave the authority to this one spirit. It didn't say they were lying spirits. One spirit had the ability to influence 400 human beings, which were false prophets of Baal, to convince Mr. Ahab, that yes, we all have heard from God and it's time for you to go and deal, which was a lie. And long story short, he lost his life. So we see now where spirits influence people, right? Let's go to Mark chapter 1. Let's go to Mark chapter 1. And we're going to look from verse 22 to verse 26. Mark chapter 1, verse 22 to verse 26. Listen to what it says. And there was in the synagogue, Jesus is now preaching, he's in the synagogue preaching, and he says, in the synagogue, there was in the synagogue a man, listen, a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. This is interesting. So the scriptures are now informing and educating us, the reader, that it is very much possible, according to scripture, that other spirits can live in our temple. Our temple will be our physical bodies. Other spirits, watch this now, can reside simultaneously in our beings, in our physical bodies. Now, I tell you, I'm building a foundation because with those who say spirit husband and spirit wife and all these other spirits, that's a bunch of foolishness, a bunch of nonsense. Well, then, this is what I'm reading is foolishness. I'm reading nonsense then because according to Mr. Jesus, according to the scriptures, it says that while Jesus was in the temple, there was a human being, and this human being had an unclean spirit. That's what I'm reading. And the Bible says, he cried out, the human being, the real person. He cried out because he realized the word who was up on the pulpit. And the word is who? Jesus the Christ. Watch this now, verse 24 of Mark 1. So he cried out saying, let us alone. So while the man is crying out, a voice is coming on him saying, leave us alone. Whoa, 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 back up here, back up here, back up here, back up here. You mean leave us alone? What does that mean? Leave us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Are thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Now there's some major nuggets here, major nuggets. What are some major nuggets, Mr. Ewing? Well, initially when we began the story, it was identified that there was a man, singular, in the synagogue who had a singular unclean spirit. This unclean spirit, which I always say is the chief spirit, the strong man, he couldn't take Jesus no more, who is the word. 
Bible says there was a cry out, but it wasn't the spiritual, it was the physical man who was possessed, who wanted relief. And he cried out, but when he went to utter, the spirit now begins to speak. And the spirit now says, leave us alone. But what would end this teaching right now? This right here says to me, you don't need no miracle juice and ju Jesus juice foolishness. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, uh, I, thought, I think first John somewhere around there, and it says that there are three that bear this, I believe, in heaven, which is God, the Word, which is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, right? The Bible says God has sent his Word, which is Jesus Christ. But Kevin, how do you keep affiliating the Word? And the Word became flesh. And who was this Word that became flesh? Jesus the Christ. Down there in, I think, Revelation chapter 19, somewhere about there, in John, uh, these visions that he was having on the Isle of Patmos, he said how he saw, uh, he's talking about Jesus now, and this robe or banner that he had on him, which says the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. So these evil spirits who Jesus didn't even challenge, Jesus was just the word of God who's just, just preaching, just like I'm doing right now, but these demons couldn't take it. This man coming here with truth. Why he couldn't come here with miracle cloth and red cloth and Jericho juice, Jesus dripping juice and all this? Why he had to come here and mess everything up for us? So you see what I'm saying here? What anything outside of the word of God in regards to deliverance is voodoo. It's sorcery. It's an entertainer of spirits, evil spirits. So you should say right now, I came here for deliverance. Why are you trying to bait me in this stuff? Why are you trying to rub this thing off? You have said nothing about the word of God, which is Jesus Christ, which the word agitates foul demonic spirits. I'm trying to help you. That's all I'm trying to do. All of this foolishness you're all watching on TV for entertainment. <laughs> Boy, I don't know. So watch this. He goes on to say here, verse 24, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, Jesus, Christ of Nazareth? Thou art come to destroy us. So the word of God destroys evil spirits based on their admission. I know thee who thou art. So the Bible is saying that these invisible beings, which are spirits, are able to identify who is a true believer of Jesus Christ. They have knowledge of this. Bible is giving you all these nuggets. I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Listen, listen. And Jesus, which is the Word of God, rebuked him, not them, him. Now, this is another nugget. Because there's a, there's a biblical principle that says, if you smite the shepherd, which is the leader, the sheep will scatter. So that rule, is that law is now being dictated here. Jesus rebuked the Strong man, the chief spirit. Because once you re rebuke him, the rest got to go. Because the rest are there as a privilege of the chief one. It says, and Jesus rebuked him, singular saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. Mm, now that's, that, that kind of freaked me out there. Because why I didn't see Jesus saying, out, out, get out, get out, poof, poof, get out, do, 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 do. Why don't I see that? I don't see that there. Maybe let me see. Let me turn this Bible upside down. Maybe I look. I read this wrong. It says, "Hold thy peace and come out of him." Verse twenty-six. And when listen, and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice and came up, ooh. So can these invisible beings become violent while resident in a physical body? I'm reading it. Yes. We have emotions that can emanate or, or project or exude crying. Yes, I'm reading it. So they are beings who have the ability to coexist in the temple or the physical body of another person. I'm just giving you the principles. You don't have to agree with me. I don't care if you agree with me. I'm giving you the knowledge that you need to now better prepare yourself on how to eradicate these invisible beings who had the advantage of keeping you back solely based on your ignorance of what I'm telling you right now. They had no other way. They didn't have no physical cuff on you. They didn't blind you with nothing. They didn't throw acid in your eye. All they did to be successful in their evil enterprise over your life 
and has consumed so much of your lives already, let us keep them from this information, Kevin, telling them right now. Let them sign on to this a bunch of hocus pocus. Nobody could do me nothing. No weapon for me. That's all I does thing is they don't know the, 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 the protocols that lead to the weapons not forming against you. They feel like I could still live a sinful life and then the weapons still wouldn't form. I never read a scripture that said that. So God says, because, okay, because you reject what the man said, then I'm going to have to reject you because the man only telling you my word. So as you can see here, it shows another display of how evil powers operate. Let's go now to Mark, sorry, Matthew chapter 12. And we're going to read from verse 43 to 45, another one of my favorite scriptures, because it's giving us a whole cadre of spiritual nuggets, things that we would never know. So in Matthew 12, beginning at 43, what does he say? He's giving us some real hardcore stuff. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, mm, again, for the unclean spirit to be expelled out of a person, that means it once had residence in them. I, I know Harvard student, I can be the first to tell you that. I don't even know where Yale located, but I got enough common sense and comprehension abilities to in the, to know that if something is being cast, if someone puts you out their house, that means you were in the house before. Hence, the possibility is very much obvious that there an invisible being could not only be in a person, but in influence them to do things they never done before. The Bible says the spirit ripped the man apart and it screamed. So you see the man on the ground fluttering and carrying on. You think he's being rude. You think he's being disgusting. And you're seeing the physical evidence or the result of what the spirit is doing to this person. But because you lack spiritual knowledge, spiritual rules, spiritual information, like I'm giving you, then you sum it up to, look at this fool, look at this ignorant, whatever, whatever. Hence, you now got to do another lap around this, this field of non-progress. Or because you see the word. You see it in action, but you've made the decision. I'm rejecting this. And what was the, the law of destruction? He says the law of destruction is my people are perishing. Hence, destruction becomes our life. Okay. So he says here, when an evil spirit is gone out of a man, he, which is the spirit, Walk through dry places. So can spirits walk? Well, based on what I'm reading here, yes. Can they be cast out? Yes. Oh, we will. Yes, they can. So he said, this spirit goes into dry places seeking rest. So if it's seeking rest, can we assume that spirits can become tired? Yes. <laughs> you only seek rest if you're tired. Then maybe, I don't know, maybe my brain ain't on right. So he's seeking rest and he finds none. Verse 44 it's going to show us a, a very, very. Then go with he, which is the spirit. Sorry, no, verse 44. Then he said, who's he? The spirit. I will return into my house from whence I came. Now, this is interesting because based on what I'm reading, the spirit has the ability to reason. But this thing is living in you. This thing could think this thing could talk and scream and yell and and make you do foolish stuff and start dancing and walking the street naked and do you telling me is an invisible being residing in me possession doing this according to the rules i'm giving you i, I, I didn't write this bible this is what it could do it says when the unclean spirit sorry verse 44 then he said i will return into my house so the spirit says i will return to the place that i once possess so you see here this is a very very interesting point Whenever a spirit takes up residence, particularly an evil spirit, residence in a temple or the body of a human being and begin to coexist with their spirit, that spirit now uh, deems or label that human as their possession or that's their home. And this is why you see in most uh, expelling of evil spirits, and depending on the rank of that spirit, they become very violent and vile. You see the person using a lot of obscenity. And they will pull every straw out of the bag to maintain their territory. In some cases, you'll have certain uh, so-called deliverance minister there. And once the spirit hasn't frustrated them enough to leave them alone, then a file will be pulled on them. So if that deliverance minister have not repented for whatever sins they have committed prior to coming to this deliverance session, let's say they cheated on their wife, fornicated or whatever, so the spirit is now going to bring that all to pass because the familiar spirit that is attached to that minister that he or she is not aware of, 
they are now going to work in harmony with the demon-possessed person, meaning the spirit in them. And I mentioned you this before, and I've, had, I've seen situations like this where the spirit will tell the deliverance minister, you need to stop sleeping on your wife. You need to stop beating your wife. You need to stop having sex with young people or whatever. At this point, this minister is so shocked that they may even try to end the deliverance session because this is what happens. In some cases, that, that evil spirit will even jump into that so-called minister. You may say, well, Kevin, how could this happen? Very simple. The curse causeless cannot come. So if it's coming upon you and these evil forces, then there's something in your life, clearly unrepented sin, that is giving them the legal right to do it. Remember the sons of Sceva? They get whipped and beaten. Their clothes yuck off from evil spirits, invisible entities. So don't tell me these things don't exist. Well, then you should just throw away the Bible if you don't believe it. You can't believe just portions of the Bible and then run with the rest. <laughs> no. So he says, the Spirit said, let me go back to my house from whence I came. And when he has come, or when he returned, he find it empty, swept and garnished. Meaning the guy is still maintaining their deliverance. Watch this now. Then go with he, which is the Spirit, and take on to himself seven other spirits more wicked. So he go in for reinforcement, but the reinforcement are uh, greater than him. Then the Bible says that the end of this man is worse than the first, meaning that he will be in a worse position as a result of these seven who are far more wicked than the original one now entering him. Okay? So again, these are all evidence, all evidence of evil spirits entering people. I'm going to give you another uh, scripture, Mark 5, verses 1 to 3. But for the sake of time, you can read it yourself. And then you have uh, Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verses 33 to 36. Okay, you can see more activity of evil spirits. And then you're going to see Luke 6. Luke 6, verses 16 uh, to 18. Luke 6, verses 16 to 18. And you're going to read where you talk about more uh, vex spirits. So I wanted to give you that little summary to show you that according to Scripture, I'm not reading from some uh, book written by so-and-so or Dr. So-and-so. I read it from the Bible. And it show you these behavioral patterns, characteristics of spirits uh, in a person. Now, what I'm going to do now is now show you more biblical proof, more biblical proof of spirits. Okay? Some of you are going to be hearing these things for the first time, but these are actual spirits. And all it means is that we coexist with spirits. And the protocols that must be followed for have these spirits entered you. Now, once I'm going to finish with this part of it, then we go more into the detail because I've already built my foundation and it's this foundation that we're going to build as it relates to talking about spiritual uh, spouses. So in First Kings chapter 22, like I would have given you just now, verses 19 to 23, you would have read very, very clearly, I didn't make it up, where the Bible spoke about a lying spirit. Remember, God had asked the question, which one of you, one of you spiritual beings, because there was no physical beings up there, but one of you spiritual beings, just the host of heaven, will go and persuade uh, Ahab. And the Bible said, one spirit came forward and said, uh, here, God, I will do it. And God says, well, how will you do it? And listen to what he says now. Listen to what he says. I will become a lying spirit. Okay? So if you're going to be a lying spirit, I mean, they will not be able to see you. They will not be able to detect you. In fact, your five senses will be disabled when this spiritual entity or this invisible being show up that will possess you and now in, 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 uh, and persuade you because this is what they do persuade you to do something you wouldn't do under normal circumstances but, but, but this is the part I want you to get there has to be something in you that can give them the right to do it well false prophets we already know they never serve God so all of the ground was already uh, plowed and cultivated for the spirit to come and run its course unhindered. So this is why I say to people who come to me all the time, what wait, witchcraft for me and blah, blah, blah. Okay, that may be true. And more than likely it is true. So my next question to you, because I'm going based on biblical rules, what is it in you though? I hear you telling me the neighbor next door, plant stuff, for you, uh, throw stuff over there. You see them the other day dancing naked in the yard. Going on with you. In your heart primarily, because I know you can tell me, I don't cuss Kevin. One thing with me, I one thing I buy my pastor car every year. See, that's what I don't want to hear. What I want to hear, are you living a righteous life? And righteous simply mean according to God's law, not your church policy, not your pastor advice, which is contrary to God's word. 
Are you? You hate your neighbor, right? I can't stand my neighbor, but that's, not, that's the first place we can start right there. It is your hate towards that person. It's your anger and honor, which your Bible clearly tells you shouldn't be a part of you as a Christian. So let's look at some spirits here, right? Okay, let's look at... Uh, let's look at... I like this one here. Uh, Romans chapter 8. Let's look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, and look at verse 15. Romans chapter 8, verse 15 says, For you have not received, listen, the spirit of bondage. Now, before we go, let's start from verse 14 because it'll make more sense. Verse 14 of Romans 8. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, Again, God is a spirit, meaning he's invisible. We cannot see him. But it is possible for him to lead us according to the scriptures. <laughs> Many that are led by the spirit of God, they are what? Call who? The sons of God. So the sons of God would be those who are compliant with the leading of God Almighty. All right? Verse 15 says, For ye, meaning you, the sons of God, who are led by the spirit of God, for you have not received, listen, the spirit of bondage again to what? Fail. There's a spirit called bondage that will cause fear in your life. And you, 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 you're bound by a spirit that's making you intimidated and fearful of everything. You don't want to hear no bad news. Please don't send me no videos of somebody getting shooting. Kill up. Why these things affect you so greatly, superstar Christian? Well, he says, for, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Okay, let's look at another spirit. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God did not give us a spirit of fear. Let's look at another scripture of this. So, Kevin, are you saying fear is not a feeling or an emotion? Well, actually it is from this perspective. You see, when you become fearful, that is the physical evidence that the spirit of fear is attacking you. But the feeling, okay, of fear, fear in, 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 in general is not an emotion there. Fear is actually a spirit. There's no two ways about it. Fear is a spirit. Okay? Now, let's look at another one. In Proverbs chapter 14, I like this one here. Proverbs chapter 14. And let's look at verse, uh, verse 29. And listen what it says here. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. But he that has, but he that is a hasty of spirit excel folly. So he said there's a spirit. The word hasty means of anxiousness. A lot of you are like that. You just, I did a teaching on that. you just anxious for no reason. Somebody promised you something. You'll be calling them every minute, nagging them. And you don't see yourself as a nag. You don't see yourself as irritating. You're always repeating things over and over. You're just anxious. You can't wait for nothing. You gotta travel. Uh, you gotta travel next month, November on the 29th. You don't pack your stuff. You don't iron your clothes and just sitting there looking at it all day. You got a whole month ahead of you. It's called an anxious. But there's what the, the point I'm making. There is a spirit influencing you to be that way. All right. That's what's causing that. Uh, let's look at Numbers chapter 5. Numbers chapter 5, verse 14. Numbers chapter 5, verse 14, it says, And the spirit of jealousy. Jealousy isn't just an emotion. The emotion of jealousy is just like fear. It is only evidence that the spirit, the invisible being, okay, just like the lying spirit influence prophets of Baal to tell Ahab go fight, then this jealous spirit has descended on you and influencing you to be jealous of your wife, jealous of your co to teach you more about the unseen world as opposed to the physical world. If you want to know more about the physical world and be kept out here, you don't have to get saved. Continue to live the life of sin. But Paul, in his statement, even to the church of Corinth, in 2 Corinthians 4 and 18, he says, listen, Church of Corinth. He says, do not become focused on the scene. Don't be caught up by what you see. 
for what you see is temporal. These things are fading away. There's nothing permanent with the brand new car, with this wife, the new baby. All this joy is bringing you now. One day this will fade away. He said, instead, focus on the unseen. What is this man talking about? The invisible realm. And these beings that I tell you exist that influence mankind. I try to help you. All right? So watch this now. The Bible also goes on to speak about the spirit, and I like this one here, the seducing spirit, which is in 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. And I can just write, just call them off for you so you can go and look it up, all right? Again, you have the haughty spirit, which is arrogance. That's Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. The arrogant or the proud spirit, meaning that when you see people like that, I know a lot of preachers like a very arrogant man. Man, if you watch the way they handle their congregants and people, they believe that they float on the air. They believe that you must worship them, not cases. That's what I see them as. Okay? People like that you could never learn from because to them, they you... One of the spirits that's on them is this comp competitive. The, the truth is, they're, they're narcissists. They're narcissists, meaning that it's all about them. They, they, you will never ever rise above them. They will never see themselves that God put me in your life to help you be put, catapult to your destiny, and more than likely you'll probably exceed me. If they even imagine that, all of a sudden God ain't ready to release you yet. The Holy Spirit tell me you must be that oh, lies, lies, lies. So that 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 haughty spirit, that 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 arrogant spirit, those things there, you need to run far away from. Then you have the spirit of disobedience, Ephesians chapter two verses uh, one to two. Then you have Isaiah sixty one verse three, the spirit of depression, but it's labeled as the spirit of heaviness in that particular scripture. The same thing. Again, you feeling, Lord, why I feel so depressed? Lord, why I feel so depressed? I feel like I can't move. I don't want to go nowhere. I don't want to take a bath or clean my room. How much times you walk out there in the kitchen, take out that piece of meat, put it in the zinc there for it to thaw out, only to come back there the next day, the meat flies around it. You even got to strain the throat while you're depressed. But listen to what I'm saying to you. It is a spirit that's sitting there. And as long as you are not using the word, remember what the Bible says, when don't demons and that man, Jesus didn't say a word to him. All he did was begin to declare who he is, the spirit of truth. And they couldn't take it no more. They say, Jesus, what you come here for? What do you mean I said, and you taking all these pills only to make it worse because spirits are not affected by pills. The only pill they respond to is the word of the living God. When I begin to say the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, it also resides in me. When I begin to say that, behold, he has given me power to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the works of the devil, and nothing by no means shall harm me. It is he that is in me, and he that is in the world. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that has risen up against me in judgment, be it spiritual or physical, I have been given the power to condemn it, and I condemn you in the name of Jesus. I decree the spirit of peace, the spirit of happiness, the spirit of joy over my life. I eradicate you evil demonic force of depression. Who is teaching you to do that? What are they teaching you? I hear there are 10 people in here who is depressed. I hear God say, if you sow a sacrifice, oh, look, here we go again. Here we go again, Jesus. Here we go again. Everything except God's word. That same lion spirit would descend on them 400 prophets. Listen, they are an abundance in the year. <laughs> I tell you. I tell, why you won't give me the word? Of, but you, every time you read Jesus' encounter with these spirits, tell them nothing about the contrary to the unadulterated word of God. Why are you people sitting and listening to these people? I, I just don't get it. I, I So the Bible speaks about a broken spirit also one of disappointment. You are planning something and you just, your whole life is a life of disappointment. Nothing never pans out the way that it should. Now, this spirit also work along with the spirit of heaviness because it went at a certain point, as well as Proverbs 17 verse 22. Excuse me. All right? 
And then, of course, in Luke chapter 13, I like this one, you have a spirit of infirmity. I did extensive teaching on this. When a person is through sorcery, a spirit of infirmity is sent to them. The person will begin to experience symptoms, excuse me, of sickness. One of the primary signs, the primary signs of when a, a, a witchcraft is on a person, and in fact, I prepare this right now in terms of signs of sorcery in a person's life that you could look forward to. And of course, we can tell them in scriptures. But when sorcery is on a person, the first thing you see is these abnormal swellings of them. One of the legs becomes bigger than the other. The face becomes bigger than the other. And they go to the doctor, and it's up again as usual. There's nothing that the doctor emits a spirit on an MRI machine. You will never discover a spirit in an X-ray machine. You will never discover a spirit in a particular blood test. So what the Bible did, the book, the rule book is saying, okay, these are the pro pro principles you follow now that you've identified the spirit. Now you take the word of God, okay, through knowledge. Shall it just be delivered? How are you going to be delivered? I'm going to now take this knowledge and I'm now going to apply the knowledge that I have. Not one time. I'm going to keep applying it, keep following this rule, keep staying in line with what this word says until I see the change. Because the rule is, it's going to be a, a fight for seeing who could outlast each other. The spirit is going to continue harassing me even while I'm fasting, even while I'm praying, even while I'm in consecration. Mind you, it's getting weak. But it's still going to show up in my dream. It's still going to cause a problem in my everyday life. Because the idea is, let me see how long Kevin could take this. Because they can't take it either, but they ain't showing you they're getting weak. So it's up to you now. You can continue or you can be like most people who call me. Boy, Kevin, I didn't do what you tell me to do. Oh, Lord. And how long you been doing it? Boy, Kevin, I ain't going to lie. I tried that, that, that seven-day fast. Boy, look at 20 minutes after that, man, I had more boy kicking in my mouth. So you see what I say? So when you don't have people who understand the spiritual world, the rules and the parameters of that world, all right, then what do they do? Then they give you, tell you everything except what God said. They make up stuff and call it revelation, like a crossover. Scene. Going into the next, I love this one. I love it. I know it's annoying them because they are thieves and liars. They're telling you, you cannot go over into 2023 for free. You've got to put your love offering now, your crossover seed. You will get over there. Even though you've been going over there, money here for free, not this time. We the preacher saying today, we need to cross over seed. Every time I hear that, every I tell you, it, it, I hate it. And I cannot see educated, sensible people buying into that. Mighty God. They got God for sale. Mighty God. Then, of course, you got the spirit of wisdom and revelation, Ephesians 1 and 17. Then you got the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Isaiah 11 and 2. You got a faithful spirit, Proverbs 11 and 13, a humble spirit, Proverbs 16 and 19. Then you have a spirit of excellence, whereas Proverbs 17, 27, as well as Daniel chapter 1 and 3, 1 to 3, and Daniel 5, verses 11 to 12. So all of these, it's just evidence, again, where spirits coexist with us. I've just given you that prior to that. I show you behaviors of evil spirits and how they function, just like a regular human being, the only thing that they don't have is that they don't have a physical body, so instead they look for a body to possess, to facilitate more easily their specific function, whether it's a spirit of lying or, or, or whatever the case may be. So, now that I build that foundation, let's come back now to what we can talk about, spirit husband, spirit wife, all right? And for the most part, these demonic forces, they come, they achieve one of two ways, primarily though, through our dreams. See this a lot dreams that are saturated and filled with sexual activity you will see these things aside from the dreams they will come as a result of sexual violations sexual violation all right so all that simply means is that if the bible tells you you cannot sleep with your brother you cannot sleep with your sister you cannot sleep with your daddy's wife so on and when you break these laws and do it then you're inviting spirits but i'm going to one of those spirits will be a spirit husband, spirit wife, because they need to ensure, the purpose of spirits again, evil spirits, that you never ever accomplish your God-ordained purpose. It will fight you on every level, in your marriage, in the job you're supposed to have, so on and so forth. And this is why when you see me speak about marriage, I go far further than the average preacher. The average preacher just say, okay, you can get married, but if you divorce, 
Divorce is a sin, which is a lie. Divorce is a sin. If you get married again, that's a that's a sin. That's a lie because the Bible makes provisions for these things in certain circumstances, right? So they keep you in bondage, and you scared, you're frightened. Some listen to me right now. They want to be married. Husband leave them, and he was an unbeliever. He went do his thing, but they've been told by their church you cannot get married because if you get married, you're going straight to hell because you would be in uh, perpetual adultery, and you can't. Forgive me if you're still living and you're going to hell. These are all lies. Again, when you see me wrap up these last set of teachings I have, come up with my teaching with marriage, divorce, and remarriage. Again, like I'm doing now, giving you the scripture, not my opinion. Again, you could go along with the tradition of some ideology and beliefs outside of the scriptures, and they're trying to make themselves uh, glorious and righteous and make you look evil. You could go with that, or you could go with what the Bible say. That's totally up to you. Again, God says you will perish because you lack knowledge. And it wasn't that it wasn't offered to you. It was what you rejected. So it's totally up to you. Okay. So what I want us to look at now is, like I said to you, the spiritual spouse will come through dreams primarily or through sexual violation of sin. So those people who have been molested by a relative, uh, They've been raped, especially in their younger years. This is where the spirit will slip in, slip in, slip, slip in. Young men, young boys in particular, who are played with wet dreams, right? Again, they're not aware of it. I'm going to explain that again. I, I told you this before. But they're literally, through their dreams, engaging with evil forces, masquerading as women they attract to whatever, and literally their spirit is engaging sexually with the spirit of that demon. Again, sex in the dream only, it's just a covenant that needs to be established to facilitate, again, the will of that spirit. And now you'll begin to see changes in that boy becoming very sexually promiscuous, very lustful, whatever, all because of that. They go deep into watching pornography. And this is for a boy or girl. Masturbation is another form of it. But, but masturbation comes as a result of the repetitive imagination, imag imagining of these sexual acts. And the spiritual law was violated, meaning that it was never cast down. As a result, that evil spirit had an upper hand on the individual, and now masturbation becomes a way of life. In fact, if they don't do it, they feel almost like a crack addict. So the Bible says to us another rule, casting down all imagination that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity these loose thoughts under the Lord Jesus Christ. So when these are not just scriptural words or whatever, these are actual rules. And when you ignore them or you're not being uh, informed of them, then you take on the word, oh, masturbation is healthy for you, blah, 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 nonsense, nonsense. These are all facilitators of uh, uh, evil of evil spirits. Okay. So now that we get that, I want to I wanna pull up this particular uh, what I did is I went online and I did a research in terms of spiritual spouses all over the world and the different cultures uh, that subscribe to them, but not from a Christian perspective, but it is a part of their culture. Remember, we talked about culture last week, all right? Now, one of the first ones I came up with was uh, Africa. In Africa, you know, they have varying type of uh, religions, such as voodoo and all these other stuff. And they have been in the Caribbean all over the world too, but it's more concentrated there in most cases. Okay, so I came course, this one, and it says, uh, in terms of the spiritual spouses, it is normally conducted or brought about through different ceremonies. In the voodoo world, okay, it is brought about by a spiritual wedding ceremony, listen, between the voodoo divinities and their devotees, all right? It is also believed that there is sexuality between the conjugal pair by way, listen carefully, of dreams. So, what does this mean? Now, I don't know about you guys, but I, I do a lot of research, and I spend a lot of time on YouTube, you know, in these different cultures, their practices, and so on. And I came across this one particular country, I'm not going to call its name, where they would have the actual uh, ritual, and all the participants would be there, and the men and the women would, you know, dress in white, and put the white powder on their face, and so on, and you have the big altar there, with the fruits, the different alcoholic beverages, and so on. 
Then you'd have the guy beating the drums at a very slow pace at first, and then it would pick up the speed very, very, very fast. So the person who is doing this video is now you know, giving us detail, and he says what they're waiting on is for the spirit to come. So they would now take the alcohol, liquor, and put it in their mouth with this stick with fire on it and then blow it. Or they would then spit the alcohol on this altar, which have the fruit. And everything on that altar is what was requested or required by the spirit that they're inviting. All of this is to appease the spirit for the spirit to come. So how are we going to know now that the spirit has arrived? Well, the people who are now dancing based on the beat, their bodies now are going to be contorted in terms of how they're dancing and moving. Some is going to move like a snake. Some is going to turn like their eyes are going to roll back and voices be speaking through them, their body's going to become like torted and drop back like a crab and moving on the ground and so on. So at this point, they have volunteered through this particular ritual to have these spirits to come in them. So when the spirit come in them, uh, they would normally, in some cases, depending on where you are, will have an interpreter for those who don't understand a particular English language. And the spirits will now speak to the person in whatever language and the interpreter will be there to say certain things. So they will ask the spirit certain things about the weather, about the harvest, about enemies, and so on. Again, they, even though they're doing wicked, they're still operating on the principles that I just gave you. They are fully aware that there's a spiritual realm. They are fully aware that we coexist with spirits. They are fully aware that it is very much possible because it's happening right there and then that these spirits could coexist in the physical bodies or the temple of a human being. And they can now actually perform as if this is their physical body and make their expressions. It is all there, and again, it is all based on the same set of rules. There's no two rules. It is the same set of biblical rules because they're principles that they're operating on. Okay? Now, once this has happened, I want to be clear here now, when the spirit, quote-unquote, leaves the person in their back to their normal, uh, the average person will think, well, that spirit isn't anymore. Well, that's not true. Well, that spirit that manifested may be dormant, but I can assure you it isn't gone because once you give it the legal right to enter your body, because that's what all of them see, the evil ones, possession, to have ownership. This is why, again, when you study uh, demonic uh, oppression and deliverance story by Jesus, in the many instances the Bible says, you will hear with the spirit cry out, rip up the poison and violently, because in their head, this is, this is a life goal. To, in, to have a human body to our disposal. So eradicating them, if you're not skilled in deliverance, they are very, very conniving, very, very manipulative, and will make you believe they're gone. But the truth is they are right there waiting for the opportune times to perform uh, uh, their bidding or what have you, right? So these spirits that have now come either through sexual stuff, either through what I just explained to you, either through the dreams, once they now enter a poison, all hell is going to break through in that poison. We're talking about the spirit spouse now. And there are certain signs that you're going to see. But let me just complete this here with these different nations first. And, and you will see more sense in it, right? So in uh, in this particular country, I'm going to call them. And the reason why I'm trying to avoid calling the names, I just started deleting people, talking foolishness on my line, my timeline about, oh, uh, so, so Africa's the only place that is do that, or Jamaica, see, I ain't got time for that. So to save myself from deleting and blocking them, because I don't even give them a break and give them a chance. That is a spirit of division, trying to cause confusion, and what I'm trying to get across. So I delete them and block them. I don't care who they are. If my mother did that, I block her and delete her. Because I refuse to allow anyone to change what I'm saying in terms of the scriptures, all right? So in this particular country, it says here, uh, elaborate figures are carved out to symbolize spiritual spouses. So they will, they will carve out of the wood these tall uh, figures, human figures, animal figures. So elaborate figures are carved out that symbolize spiritual spouses. All right? And these, most of these figures will be representative of an adult male or female. Okay? And, the, and what they're saying is that the ritual that will be performed, because the two, the figures that are being carved out, they're actually representing a human person, actually, even though they're spiritual spouses. 
And it's saying here that these spirits that will come as a result of this particular ritual will come in the dreams of the person that's being represented at, at this particular altar, because that's what it is. So these spirits will come masquerading as people they're familiar with, people they are, they like. It might even be their own wife or husband in the dream, but it's not their wife or their husband. It's their masquerading as that. Okay, Kevin, I hear all that. So show me the scripture for this masquerading stuff. Again, we go to the book of Corinthians, I think, first or second Corinthians 10, verses 21, 20 to 21. It says, marvel not for even Satan himself is capable in transforming into an angel of light. So does his ministers. His ministers mean his servants. They are able to do the same thing. Again, I'm giving you biblical sound ground to stand on that evil spirits have the ability to masquerade. Masquerade means to change their identity into something else, pretending to be something or someone else. They can transform, if it's possible, into humans as well as animals. According to Mark chapter 5, it speaks very clearly. When the evil spirits that was in the man, they begged Jesus, don't cast us out of this territory, cast us into the pigs. And for whatever reason, Jesus did it. Again, these are all principles. These are all rules. I'm not pulling nothing out of a heart. I don't have my opinion here. I'm telling you what the Bible is saying to us. All right? So these figures now, once the, once the ceremony is performed, it is now sent to that individual via the spirit is coming to them in the dream. And the dream, all the dream means is the spiritual realm that this dream is operating in. So the dreamer was sleeping, all right? And let's say I'm married, they are married. And let's say in this dream, the man, he had a dream and his ex-girlfriend he saw and she was naked in the dream. And she was calling him to, you know, have intercourse with her. And he actually did it. Now, what he doesn't know is that his spirit man, because that's what's actually, this is real. While he may call it a dream, the dream is only the portal and taking you into the spiritual world. But this man's spirit is having intercourse with this evil spirit that is masquerading, masquerading as his ex-girlfriend. Now, what has happened here? A covenant was established giving the spirit the right that it did not before to now become the spiritual wife in this man's life. And there are certain things that's going to happen in his marriage that... Everyone would be like, that, that ain't how he normally is. Kevin, give us more proof. You're making up more stories. I'm glad you said that. So let me give you a quick biblical example of how in a dream, things can be given to you and you accept it and it happens in reality. Not knowing that the spiritual world is the parent world to the physical world. So as a result of that, whatever you're taking, whatever you're agreeing to, whatever you're doing, you again, those spirits convince you this is just a dream. So you don't rebuke it, you don't challenge it, you don't fast, you don't pray against it. However, it is all now making the way clear for this evil force to run its course. So let's go now quickly to 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. And again, we'd, we'd use biblical rule. I have no opinion. I don't preach opinion. I don't preach opinion. None of that. I'm giving you what the words say. Listen. So 1 Kings chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. And it says, And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh of Egypt and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her to the city of David until he had made an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Verse 2, only the people sacrificed in high places because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord until those days. Let us now, verse 3, and Solomon, I love this piece, verse 3 of 1 Kings 3, and Solomon loved the Lord, walked in the statues of David his father, only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places, and the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. Verse 5. Very powerful. Very powerful. Verse 5 of 1 Kings 3. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon. How did he appear him? In a dream. Hold on now. Back up. Let's make some sense of this now. Kevin, he appeared to him in a dream. But Solomon is asleep, I know. Very much asleep. So how could he appear to him in a dream if he's sleeping? Ah, now, you, now you're getting it. While the physical Solomon is asleep on his bed, the real Solomon, the real you, which is your spirit, is still active, engaging in the spiritual realm, particularly at night when your physical body is unconscious. When you have very little to no control now. It's only going to be based on the word of God in you, 
that's going to be able to challenge the spiritual entities that's going to challenge you. So God, who is the Spirit now, appears to this man in his dream. Listen to this now. And Gibeon, the Lord, appeared to Solomon in his dream by night. God asks, what shall I have? What asks what I shall give thee? You hear this? A spirit, which is the Spirit of God, is making an offer to not physical Solomon, but the Spirit of Solomon. You all see this? You see, now let's use the same principle. This person showed up in your dream, engaging in intercourse with you. Same principle. Because what we're going to read here, the Spirit of God is going to give Solomon something that upon him waking up, he has something spiritually that's going to dictate his life physically. So in other words, there's something going to change in him as a result of the spiritual exchange that took place in the dream, in the spiritual realm. But you will never, ever think that, wow, this, I mean, sexual I had for years, I could remember, never forget. I was, and it's just an example, I was four years old or five, and I had this dirty, nasty dream. Not knowing that right there, that right there, that right there was what began everything in your life. And that spirit sat dormant there and let you grow, but each step of the way, just influencing you, influencing you, okay? Where you started becoming curious, okay? Or oh, your little dirty magazine, your uncle, brother, mommy, daddy got about the place while they ain't there. You're looking at it. You're watching porn. You're masturbating. You're never knowing that this spirit is behind what you are becoming. So watch this now. Let's look at some more proof. So the Bible says here, God said to him in verse 5 of 1 Kings 3, what shall I give you? This is a spirit. God is a The spirit is talking to King Solomon's spirit in the spiritual realm, but all of this is on the platform of the dream. You just think it's a dream. Not knowing that this is the portal that is causing you to engage with other deities or spirits in this in the spiritual world. Verse 6 says, And Solomon said, Thou hast shown unto thy father David, my, unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth, and in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart, with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day, meaning him. Verse 7 of 1 Kings 3. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered, nor counted for multitudes. Listen, listen to verse 9. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. Stop right there. Stop right there. Is physical Solomon telling the Spirit of God to give him an a, 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 a understanding heart? No. Let's be clear. Solomon temple, no pun intended, <laughs> or his body is physically asleep. Because I know when you're reading this story, you're thinking that physical Solomon is having a conversation with the spirit of the living God. And that's not what's happening here. Physical Solomon is asleep. And the spirit of the living God made an offer to him. What is it that you want to request? What is it you want? The spirit of Solomon is now communicating with the spirit of God. And telling him, you are greater, my father. You've had mercy on him. You've given him many victories. The only thing I want from you, Spirit of God, coming from me, the Spirit of Solomon, all I want from you is an understanding heart. Listen to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Listen, verse 10, and the speech pleased the Lord. Remember, the Lord is spiritual. You cannot see him. And the speech pleased the Lord. That Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, excuse me, and hast asked not for thyself long life, neither has asked riches for thyself, nor has asked the life of thine enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Listen to verse 12. Behold, I have done according to thy words. 
No, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart. Stop it. Stop it right there. Stop it. Stop it. Because this is becoming mysterious. Strange. God, how are you able to give Solomon something in a dream that will actually be something he received that will actually work in real life? When Solomon, as we know him, is asleep, it is the same principle when the enemy shows up in your dream. The wet dream, the sexual dreams, dreams of having sex with other people other than your spouses. This is the exact same principle that now introduce the spirit husband, the spirit wife, the spiritual spouse, incubus, succubus. From this point forward, you now begin to see a light shift in a different direction based on this evil deposit that was given to you in a dream. Mighty God, I hope you all listen to me. You need some more proof because your luck lost, okay? So let's go here now. I'm going to see a parable with the exact same principle what i'm telling you again the bible is a book of laws rules principles ordinances you understand what i'm saying to you when you take the bible from that perspective you will fall in love with it because you see it entirely different from what it has become today where other people has made a book of uh, money exchanges all right so let's go here to uh, matthew 13. matthew 13 I'm going to read verse 25 again, even though this is a parable, it is a principle. And the parable was only brought about to reveal the principle of this. So watch this now. Remember, God the Spirit gave Solomon, who is a human, but he's asleep at this point. He's giving him some spiritual good deposits that will make him a better person than he is at that point. And the positive that he gave him was wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And just to, 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 so the next day, he had a case where these two prostitutes, both of them had kids, lived together in their own separate beds. But one of the prostitutes accidentally rolled over while she was sleeping on her child, suffocated the child, and the child died. So deceitfully, she took her deceased child and crept over to the bed of the other prostitute and exchange her dead child with the living child of the other prostitute. So when they woke up the next morning, the other prostitute realized that this is not my child. So they decide now to take it before Solomon, who did not have the wisdom, the knowledge, and understanding before, but he received it in a dream. So when they brought it here, both were claiming that this was their child. So what's the wisdom that's now going to come from Solomon? Solomon said, okay, let me take you out. You know what? Say, go get the guard and tell the guard, bring the sword to cut this child in half and eat each one of these women a part of the child. In Solomon's wisdom, he realized that if I do this, the one who this child really belonged to will not want that child to be harmed and rather forego and let the other one keep it. So when that happened, of course, it happened exactly how he thought. And he told the guard, hey, stop right there. Give the child to the mother over here who insists that the child live. But where did this man get this wisdom from? In a dream. From who? From a spirit. Who's the spirit? The spirit of the living God. In a dream, Kevin? Kevin, you can't read it. <laughs> yes, in a dream. Because he was asleep. And the Bible clearly stated in 1 Kings 3, it says that when he woke up, he realized it was just a dream. It was more than a dream, my friend. So it's the same principle that we're basing the spirit husband, spirit wife, in Kippur Succubus. The, 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 the things that's happening in your life in this uh, perverted way, th th there was a door that was open. All right. So in Matthew 13, verse 25, listen to this portion of this parable that is the exact principle of what I just told you. This is what it says. But while men slept or while they are sleeping, uh -huh, what happened? his enemy, uh -huh, which is Satan, came and sowed tears, which we could call curses, among the wheat, the blessings that already existed, and went his way. So the enemy came into your dream with the opposite sex or the same sex, whatever you into, <laughs> and now begin to engage with you. But you have, you're not aware or you're ignorant to the fact that 
your engagement clearly was in your physical body. In your engagement and intercourse with this spirit of perversion that's masquerading as this beautiful person, your spirit through the sexual act became one or it forged a covenant between you and that spirit that has now given that spirit the right to run its course unhindered in your life. Listen to the rule again. While men slept, you're sleeping, but you think it's a dream. His enemy came, he made an evil deposit through the ark in the dream. And listen to that. He sowed his tears, his evil among the wheat, your blessings, and he gone his way. Why? I've already programmed them spiritually. They're ignorant. They don't know nothing about canceling, rebuking, coming against you with the blood of Jesus. I divorced myself from the evil covenant established in the dream. No, because as far as they're concerned, that's hocus pocus foolishness. I see that in the Bible, so I ain't going to follow that. That's foolishness that boys be talking about. Something wrong with him. Well, according to spiritual laws, Hosea 4 and 6, you are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. Not that it wasn't offered you. It was offered you. He said, because you've rejected knowledge. Let me be clear. I will also reject you. So I'm giving you the rules. I'm giving you the principles in which these things stand on. Don't worry about the labeling. Forget the, the labeling is only to give you a more vivid understanding of what you're dealing with. For example, a lying spirit. I cannot see a lying spirit, but based on the labeling, it is consistent with the behavior of this person. They are constantly lying, but me as a spiritual person understand that the, 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 there's a spirit behind them. It's a lying spirit influencing them. They, they are victims. They are, they are bondage. They don't even know. Life tied right up. <coughs> Can't go a cup. So this the spirit spouse on this woman, on this man, they cannot stop fornicating. They cannot stop committing adultery. Mind you, they truly love their partner, but they are obsessed sexually with other people. And the evidence of it, they don't want to leave. They, 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 no matter who they fool up with, they still want to stay home because they, they truly love their wife, but they don't know how to truly enjoy them, how to truly, in fact, when they get home, they hate them, they despise them. But when they leave the house, they miss their wife, they won't be until they go back to them again. So with that said, let's go a little bit deeper. Now that I've already given you some more foundation, right? I want to give you some signs that you may have a spiritual spouse in your life, all right? Remember I told you how it comes about? Normally, primarily through sexual dreams. Those dreams aren't coming by accident. And talk with your children. Your children who are age, who have you already spoken to about sex and people touching them in appropriate areas, that in all the conversation should be, baby, uh, listen, if you're having any kind of dreams, sexual stuff, you got to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. You have to cancel it. Teach the children now to avoid serious problem in the future. Why? Wild men slept, his enemy came and so tears among the wheat. You don't see the principles. So signs that you may have a spiritual spouse. The first one, constant sexual intercourse in your dreams. Bottom line, the more you entertain it, the worse the dreams are going to become. And worse in the sense that they become more perverted. They go from same sex to sex with animals to sex, listen to this, with your own children. These are the filthy dreams you're going to have. All of these are signs of either a spirit spouse or these are signs that they're trying to enter. So you would say, man, I, Kevin, I had this disgusting dream. I, I too shame to even tell you this dream. But I can tell you because it's nasty. I dream. Last night, Kevin, I don't even think this way. I didn't know somebody could be saying, I dreamed last night I had sex with my daughter. But Kevin, pray for me, man. Pray for me, man. Because this this wicked. Now, what they don't know. No, you, you, there was a spirit masquerading as your daughter. Now, why is the spirit masquerading as your daughter? Well, it's masquerading as your daughter because when we go back to the biblical rules, that's what they're trying to get you. What does the Bible say? If you have sex with next of kin, like your daughter, it's an abomination. And the Bible also says, this is Leviticus 18, it also says that those that do this, this is an abomination unto the God, and God told Israel, don't do these things because this is what the Canaanites and the Egyptians were doing, which were their rituals or customs, he called it, and this is what invited spirits. Same principles, God told them what this act will cause if you do it physically, if you have it in a dream. 
Kevin, you said to me about the dream part. Remember, the dream is just the, the platform of interaction in the spiritual realm. So sex in the dream, and the more with it that sex become, is showing the dominance of this spirit wife, spirit husband, spirit spouse, uh, incubus, succubus, all same things in modern Jedi. Secondly, dreams, we talk about married people at this point, dreams where, let's say you're pregnant in real life, you're in real life, you're pregnant for your husband, you're excited, you're all enough, whatever. But in this marriage, you've had several miscarriages. However, you could recall that every time you had this miscarriage, you had a dream prior to the miscarriage where this particular person came and molest you or had sex with you in the dream. The next morning, you go to the bathroom and you're bleeding. Rush you to the hospital, you have a miscarriage. This is the fourth one, the fifth one, the sixth one. But every time, this, this person, either they're fighting you, even if they're not having sex, they're fighting you in the dream, and they punch your stomach in the dream, or stab your stomach, or had sex with you. Again, let me be clear, I just gave you the principles. These are evil spirits interacting with your spirit man, and the result of this physically, see what's happening in physically? The manifestation of you losing the baby. All because you didn't get on your knees pray, and you didn't know how to do those things. Number three, dreams where you are breastfeeding. Many people tell me about these dreams, or they dream. Hey, Kevin, I keep dreaming like this. This handsome little boy was in my bed or in my room. And I just come there, or my husband bring it there, or my wife. But whoa, 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 whoa! Are they your children? No, Kevin, I don't even have children. So where do you think? Maybe that's the Lord showing me with my children to be like curly hair and bow legged. You see now? See, that's your problem right there. <laughs> okay. The spirit is enticing you in the dream to accept. Look what you didn't do in the dream. You didn't say, this, why this baby on my breast? I don't know. This just say my child. You didn't move it. No, it gave you a pretty baby. And in that comfortable position of, of breast sucking, you feel you want to be a mother soon. So all of this, you feel this is God speaking to you in the dream. Ain't got nothing to do with God. Pure evil demonic. Rebuke, reject. Go on a fast that time. Do a one day fast. Shut that down immediately. Because you engage and you entertain the act in the dream. Covenant, that's what they're looking for. Spirits have no relationship. No relationship is of any value with a spirit and a human other than a, a covenant. Watch this, number four. Relationships that is constantly ending the same way all the time. And how is this? A relationship where the relationship is at its pinnacle and all of a sudden one of the parties begin to lose interest completely to the extent they pick up and leave never to return never call they don't answer your call they don't answer your whatsapp your text they know facetime nothing it's like they not they like they despise you now this happens two ways but in both cases it is the spiritual spouse that work you see the way that this thing works is like spiritually, it will lead you to people who are like even affected by this to facilitate their, their, their doing. And there's a time limit on every relationship. So they will let that relationship go, let it go, because as far as the spirit spouse is concerned, it's you belong to them. And they will come in the dream and make love to you and do these things. You think in this, your wife or ex-girlfriend, whatever. No, that's the spirit. The spirit, I tell you, and I give you all of those behavioral patterns of a spirit. They can become jealous. They become angry. So if you with someone, and this is just getting serious and leading the marriage, then this is where the spirit now begins to cause more discord. It's basically running the life of this person. So you find this beautiful, attractive woman, highly educated, I mean, doing very well in life, have her own, all this other stuff, but for whatever reason, she could never maintain a relationship. But she will never connect with what I'm saying right now because she don't know. So what she's doing, she go on dating sites. No matter where you go, this spirit is running your life. You think you're going on dating sites. You think you came across this guy who have a bachelor's degree, got his own business. You think, oh my God, finally I find the man of my dreams. No, baby, this spirit is leading you there. It's got nothing to do with God. It's leading you there. And guess what? It's leading you there because... It is going to ensure that the same result, like the other 
Boyfriends you had before end the exact same way. They just hate you, despise you, reject you. Remember I told you earlier, one of the great signs of a spirit, of a spiritual husband, wife, whatever, is the spirit of rejection on that person. It's like there's spiritually there's a tag on you that says, reject me. The evidence of this, people hate you for no reason. People come to the office and they for, for, they'll tell their friend, for some reason, my spirit don't take to him. My spirit don't take to her. And they 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 show their attitude, but that is the spirit spouse agitating them to despise you. I try to help you. Watch this now. Number five. If you are planning a wedding, and this is how you're gonna know you're gonna have a spiritual spouse. Fella done buy the ring, you all done had the uh the bachelor thing, whatever. All the, the reception that paid for, the pastor that get paid, the church that everything that fixed, right? So watch this. Before the wedding, this is how you know you have a spiritual spouse, you will suffer major losses. Major. Everything that could go wrong is going to go wrong. The person who's supposed to be doing the cake, they have an issues. An hour before the wedding, that can't happen. You're going to have a flood of dreams because what happened? The spiritual spouse is becoming agitated. Because this wedding cannot go through. And even if it does, when I tell you World War IV, forget tree, they can skip tree. World War IV is going to take place in this marriage. The hate, the obscenity, the I mean the vindictiveness against each other. Why? Because the, 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 the sole core purpose of this spirit is to create disunity, is to create confusion. Is to create discord and division because as far as this footnote is concerned, you belong to me. I dictate your life. You invited me ignorantly. You didn't notice, but now that I'm here, I'm going to run this show. And that's what's happening to them. All right? A next sign is the ability, the inability, sorry, as a married couple, if you went ahead with the wedding, you was able to get past, you lost your job before the wedding happened, your car got right off, because all these things is to prevent it from happening, because this spirit don't want you to achieve marriage. But let's say you were able to overcome all of that. Then the next problem you're going to have, you're going to have a case of barrenness, you, you, in it, the inability to conceive. Mm -hmm. Your fifth and sixth year in marriage, seven, ten year in marriage, you can't have baby yet. You're tired of your man and lost him. When child, when you can have baby, my God. Now I won't be a Grammy before I did. My Lord, like that making it any better. <laughs> but it ain't you, baby. It's the spirit on you. I know they can give you fertility pills. I know they can do all of that. I only bring this from a spiritual perspective. I know, doctor. I'm just telling you. So what you need to do is you need to fast, break that covenant. That's what's, that's what's causing the lack of progress that should have been taking place in this union. All right? So it's going to be the inability to conceive. All right? Uh next one is again if you achieve achieve marriage or even if you're just boyfriend and girlfriend this spirit again the time limit is up now it's going to make your partner or your spouse become your enemy so what does this mean from this you can see a proliferation you'll notice i like that word right a proliferation of unjustified arguments and misunderstanding this is now where they seek, these spirits seek the assistance of the chief, the, the, not the chief spirit, but, but one of those major spirits. And this now becomes the spirit of offense. Everything you do, everything you say becomes a problem. So no matter how you say it, it's going to be misunderstood. The arguments to the point when you walk out of the house, jump in your car, go to work, wherever, in your mind you'd be like, this is so stupid. What are we arguing about? You're arguing because the, the rug in the bathroom was a little damp? What do you think that happened if you come out of a shower? And you cussing and carrying on for this, but you don't realize an invisible force is pulling the strings to all of this. Guess how you can try to fix it? You won't go so see it. I can never stop. Never. Now you can't wait for tomorrow. Oh, I hear what Kevin's saying. Let me go put my seed in the ground. Oh, yeah, yeah. Show me in the scripture where the spiritual spouse gone because you put seed in the ground. Boy, I hope one day you all wake up. So unjustified arguments and misunderstanding is going to become the order of the day. All right? For married people, particularly men, 
men who either married to a woman who has a spiritual spouse or that man himself have a spiritual spouse. In both cases, this is going to be another sign. The man is going to be, there's going to be, in, he's going to be incapable of performing with his wife. Meaning that he's going to have an, a, a strange and mysterious case of impotence. Mind you, he look at anybody else, he become aroused or whatever, but when it comes to her, no, nothing happening. He goes to the doctor, they check his cholesterol, they check his blood vessels, they give him some, uh, what do you call it now? Whatever. Nothing happening. If it ain't happening to him, it can happen to her. She just lose all sexual appetite for him, period. Nothing at all. The mere touch of this man will make her nauseated. Why, people? Why? Because there is a spirit. It reminds me of Luke 13, the Bible says, that Jesus is in the synagogue and he saw a woman and he said, oh, I got to stop preaching. I got to tell you this woman. You have a spirit of infirmity. Ain't nothing wrong with you. You bent over. For 18 years, you was hunched over. But there's a spirit on you. He comes down and guess what he does? He rebuked the spirit of infirmity. The spirit had to go. Why? Because Jesus is the what? Word to up. He ain't Kung Fu Chapa. He ain't put in the headlock. He ain't do no black belt. Nothing on her. He rebuke. Very calm. I will leave right now. This ain't for discussion. You are talking to the word in the flesh. I love you. Yeah? Whenever we declare the word against these forces, we are declaring the word that was made flesh. Mighty God. I so love that. So the Bible says, Jesus says, leave you spirit of infirmity. And the Bible says, straightway, meaning immediately, the woman who was bent over for 18 years stood up a wreck. Why? So you're telling me an invisible force had that woman bent over for eight? Well, you read it, right? So I'm giving you the signs now. All right? The inability, why is it that I cannot perform on my wife? I love like this and that. Why? Because there's a spirit involved. Okay? The next one. Dreams become more perverted. Mm -hmm. So remember what our topic is. Our topic is the competitive or the competing spiritual spouse. So the perversion is not only to become perverted in the dreams, but now this spirit is going to compete with your husband or with your wife. So what does that mean? Let's say you and your wife were able to have intercourse a particular night. That very night you will have a dream where the same spiritual spouse show up again. And trying to do the exact same thing you did with your husband a couple hours ago sexually. Whether you did something orally or however you do it in your bedroom. The same spirit is going to show up. You also have dreams where you see the same spirit is going to take on the form of your husband or take on the form of your wife. Masquerading spirit. Because what? It's competing with your husband. Meaning that this, this, this evil spirit that's on your life. Is competing with your real life husband, your real life wife. I'm trying to teach you today. I'm trying to help you today. So now I know many of you probably crying right now. Many of you say, I want to talk to this man right now. This man calling, this man pulling my card right now. And that's how common it is. And it's only when I have these teachings. And that's why I love social media. You see the comments, oh my God, this happened to me. So you see now you're in a community of, you. you, you this wasn't isolated to you only. And that's how the devil operates. He isolates you to make you believe this only happened to you. When the truth is, this dude working on hundreds, thousands, millions, billions of people with the same tactic. But these millions, billions of people who are being overcome by the spirit lack this information I'm giving you right now for free. No seed required. So watch this now. Dreams become more perverted. So when you have dreams, you have to now rebuke. Do not allow the spirit to frustrate you that you know what? I'm not going to have intercourse with my husband and wife anymore because look, like every time I have intercourse, and depending on what we do in bed, this evil thing does visit me. No, 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 no. No, baby, you need to get you need to get in a fasting regimen to shut this clown down. That's what you do. You don't coil up in the corner and take defeat. No. Christian, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The same spirit that raised whole Jesus up from the grave also reside in you. So why are you not using that power? No, I know why, because you won't go give seed. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. Ten, 
you are dominated by a spirit of rejection. Remember I told you that? All of these are signs that you have a spirit spouse in your life. You are dominated by the spirit of rejection. Rejection, low self-esteem, and a lack of confidence. These are the primary things in such people. Watch this now. You all ready for this one? Because this can be a shocker. This spirit is so frustrating and relentless and committed to ensuring that you don't ever enjoy your life with anyone in life, particularly that of your spouse. So one of the next signs you're going to see is, not see but sense, is where your body begins to emit foul odors, particularly in your private parts, and this particularly happened to women. The problem here is only you could smell this, nobody else. So what does this do? Again, it's going to break you down mentally because you don't want to have intimacy with your husband because you figure you smell too bad. So you're going to spend thousands of dollars breaking this door by going to doctors who are going to tell you, mom, listen to me carefully. There is nothing wrong with you. I don't smell nothing. There's nothing here. Please, you are never going to be convinced, again, because you're ignorant to these rules, and you're going to go from doctor to doctor to doctor to the point you turn your husband off from you completely. Next thing, the man sweethearting, having sex with other people, all because the spirit got the upper hand on you because you lack this knowledge. So where you have strange body, uh, uh, terrible body odors coming from you, and I'm not talking about armpit odors, I'm talking about private areas, particularly with women. They will be the ones normally affected by this. In some cases where a husband is having a sweetheart and the sweetheart want him to be, she would send such a spirit on the wife. Because the idea is to bring division between them, okay? So strange from your body, especially your private areas, that only you can smell, nobody else. Okay, number 12, the spirit is jealous of your mate. And this is where you're going to have the consistent fighting, the consistent opposition, foolish arguments, because this spirit husband is competing. It's jealous. I'm telling you, the only difference between this spirit and a human being is that don't have a physical body. However, don't need one, because it resides in one, of, one or even two of both parties. So you'll spend all of your life, all of your life, challenge never enjoying your life because you lack such information. And this is why I say to people all the time, life is not only spiritual, but the origin of life is spiritual. And the spiritual world is the parent world to this physical world. And if you are a Christian and you deny or, or, or reject the spiritual part of life, then you, are, you shouldn't be a Christian. You, you, and not to say you should be a Christian, but you you clearly lack... When you sign on to Christianity, what you sign on to, you didn't sign on with an option to be in spiritual warfare. That becomes automatic with it. You didn't sign on to be challenged by devils. That's automatic. You, in fact, you and you, you made yourself a red flag for them to come after when you said, "I want to live for Christ now. I want to live for Christ now, and I want to do things right in life." So what that means is that. These spirits are going to do everything to get you to go against the laws of God. So people like myself become a necessity to people like you who truly want to change in your life, not by word or not by saying because I go to a church or because I under part. No, you, Kevin, what is it that I need to do now to really bring about the visible changes in my life? And this is where I, Kevin Ewing, begin to take you through the laws, through the rules, through the principles. Not screaming and shouting and speaking in tongues and you speaking in tongues, blah, 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 you're doing all of that spitting, carrying on, you're praying, you're telling everybody, we just prayed for six hours last night. Okay, that's good, that's good. You've been doing this for the past three years. Why aren't we seeing no difference? And I agree, You, your prayers are from a, a decibel perspective, they're very uh, loud and whatever, but there is no change. We don't see a change in you. See, the reason why they're not going to see a change is because what you're doing is everything except the rules. What you're doing is everything except, except uh, following the rules of engagement and recognizing the true enemy and going behind that enemy. What you're being taught 
is how to look at life from a superficial, superficial, cosmetic, aesthetic perspective, meaning that I look at what I see, okay? And that is where I'm going to make my determination from. No, 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 no. You are in violation. Because Paul tell you, set your eyes on the unseen, not the seen. The seen Paul, dropping more nuggets in Ephesians 6 and 12, he says, listen, listen to me carefully. We are not fighting flesh and blood. Excuse me. Whoa, whoa, what you saying now? Because it's not like you saying something Kevin Ben said. <laughs> well, at least what Kevin got from you. No, you are not fighting flesh and blood. So when your spouse become your enemy, and you're ignorant of the fact that there's a spirit sitting in our house with a big steel partition between you and your wife. And because you lack spiritual law, you're going to attack your wife, you're going to attack your husband, you're going to hate them, you're going to be spiteful. You thinking these are your thoughts, you sitting down and planning how you can go before the divorce court and how you can say this and embarrass them and go on their job. And that time the spirit sitting back, there you go. There you go. That's what I love. That's what I love. You know what I feel like causing you all to fight today? So let me make her aggravate you and call you a sissy and you can't perform and blah, blah, blah. And that's going to send in the spirit of anger to make you punch her straight in her mouth. And from there, the police is going to come. They'll lock your foolish behind up. And the whole uh, dailies and the news media is going to see you, who's really a nice person, in a negative light. And you know, once you don't give it to the world, you can't pull that back. Nobody sees that. Nobody sees who and what is pulling the strings. No one. Because everyone nowadays is being trained that money could get this, seed could get this, and I can never stop. So you can get mad all you want. I can never stop till you stop. I am I'm coming back to bring the word of God back to the people. You have pulled the word of God out of God's house. You have taken the Bible off the pulpit. And the only scriptures you got highlighted is the scriptures where you turn seed into money and not the word of God. While people are suffering unnecessarily because they do not have the required knowledge. They don't. Therefore, they fight physically. They fight with evil thoughts and spitefulness and vindictiveness and the spirit of offense and the spirit of anger and the spirit of unforgiveness. Some of them done been divorced for the past 20 years and cannot stand the day each other walk on. And you ask them why. And they can come up with something. Every time when he was married, he leave his clothes on the floor like I was some kind of maid. I had to leave him. What does you leave the man for? You leave that man because he, they didn't realize because the, the stupidity in that, that answer is a clear evidence of that spirit that is still... Tapping itself on the back. Yeah, yeah. Spirit, husband, spirit wife. That's me. L look what I did. And I got all them lined up for divorce court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And guess what? I sent them to the pastor. You know, yeah, they went to the pastor's too. Yeah, for consonant. And guess what the pastor tell them? Because he don't know nothing. He don't know nothing deep. So you know what you tell him? Well, you know you're divorced. Now you know uh, you can't get married in God. Hey, divorce. And that's a sin, you know. And you know the, the church can look at you different and... You can't usher no more because you're divorced now. And you got to sit you down. You can't preach the word no more because you're divorced. And, you know, if you get married, nobody going to the root. Nobody's trying to go in and cut this cancer out. Nobody. So you say, how how do I end this? How do I fix this, man? Because I, I really love this woman. I really want to be with her. Well, the only thing I can tell you now, if you put a seed in the ground, Okay, put a seed there, you know, and give it some time, you know, and God forbid if you go back and say, well, pastor, it's been 10 years now, I see nothing happening. Well, sin in your life. Well, pastor, why didn't tell me that disclaimer the day I said, when I planted the seed, why didn't you tell me now, lucky if you ain't living right, the single word, why didn't you tell me that then? Well, it's up to you to study to show yourself for proof, and he will be absolutely right. He will be absolutely right. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding. We thank you, Father God, Lord, that it is only your word. It is only your knowledge that can set the people free. Not cloth, not red cloths, miracle juice, oil, miracle underwear, none of that foolishness. And I thank you, God, that you raised me up with boldness, confidence, and might. Not arrogance, 
but a boldness to declare your word with confidence, to walk your people through the scriptures, break it down, give them the principles, the laws, the rules, and to show them that you ain't gonna buy by what Kevin say, you're gonna buy what Kevin say the Bible say you are following this rule, this principle, this law that's going to free you. And they will not be like those who have sat in these uh, places for years and could show absolutely no fruit in their lives. Father, like myself and many others listening to me right now, we want to see proof. We want to see evidence. And we know you're not the fault of that. The fault is us who listen to these charlatans, robbers, liars, pulpit bandits, casino prophets, and pork chop pastors. And those are the ones who do this evil against you and your people, not the ones who are truly preaching the word of God, not the ones who truly have a heart for souls and are not selfish and arrogant, but those who go in contrary to your word and lead any other people to the corridors of hellfire. I pray that everyone that resonated with this particular teaching as it relates to this competitive, competing spiritual spouse, that they would now take the necessary actions. Very, very simple. Now that you recognize it, now that you can identify it, if you are not a believer of Jesus Christ, then you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, and now you follow the instructions that I'm going to give to what the believer should be doing. And what is that primarily? Well, it's very clear in Proverbs 11 verse 9b, through knowledge. Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Shouting, screaming, spinning on the ground, doing all of the other stuff, except repenting, except forgiving, except uh, escaping the hate, the bitterness, the unforgiveness of your heart, retaining those things and looking for deliverance is a joke. At best, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a side show. So what we need to do is do a self-introspection, make sure we're lining up with the Word of God because the Word of God is very clear. He said in Psalm 66 verse 18, if we hide iniquity in our heart, God is I hear in you. Proverbs 28 verse 13 says if, if, if you hide, sorry, Proverbs, Psalm 66, verse 18 says, If we regard iniquity in our heart, God will not hear us. Uh, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13 says, If we hide our sins, the Bible says, If we hide our sins, we shall not prosper. Isaiah 59, verse 2 says that uh, God's hands are not sure that he cannot reach us, his ears are not clogged that he cannot hear us, but it's our iniquity that are separated from us, from our God. And our sin has caused him to turn his face from us. These are all the laws and the rules and the protocols. So even though God says that because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we can boldly come before the throne of grace, which is true. But like he says, while pray, forgive us so that your heavenly father may forgive you. So the fool, but so no seed for God will have, a, have to answer to God one day. And to tell the same God that did a whole book that is inclusive of 66 books. How is it that they were able to put that on the floor and now make up their own rules, monetary rules, to bring about the miracles that God has promised for free if we follow his rules? So, Father God, I thank you that you've pulled me from that web of lies, from the deceit, the blindness. I thank you that you've broken the evil spell of traditional behavior that is contrary to your word. I thank you that you open up my spiritual eyes, Father God, to see the reality that if I take the time and acquaint myself with your word and now begin patient enough to continue to do it until I frustrate that devil to be eradicated and allow the things that you have ordained for me before the, world, the foundation of the world to come to pass. And now, like I'm doing right now, that my life is a living proof of the manifestation of one who followed the law of God. That's why I can boldly say it worked for me. Give to the poor. Help your fellow man. Show forgiveness, compassion, and love. Always thinking about others above self. Always in a repentant state. Planting the right seeds, which is the word of God. In so much words, walking in righteousness or according to the way God wanted to be done. And sit back and watch the glory and the manifestation of God run its course in my life. I thank God I don't sit under no body to tell me foolishness in terms of not that I don't want to be under no one, but those who want to give me their ideology. No, if it's not the word of God, I will not entertain you. And there's no law that I should. So I pray, Lord, that those who are listening to me, listen to the word of God, not listen to make Kevin their God, because I'm entertaining that. I ain't a spiritual father, mommy, uncle. I have no spiritual offense. I am not one. So I will not encourage you spiritual sorcery. What I would encourage you to do, though, like I do every week, 
get into the laws, the rules, the principles of the scriptures. Make that your everyday life. And the day will come when the pressure, when the struggle, when the hustle will come to an end in terms of it wouldn't be as, a, as hard as it used to be. This is what you call working spiritually smarter than physically harder. So, Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. Father, we praise you. And we ask these things in the matches in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So, folks, I will not be here in the next two weeks. I will be doing, I'll be away in uh, Orlando. Uh, we will be doing the uh, Interceding for Your Family conference. Deidre and I, uh, uh, the Humphreys, uh, the Rosses, all of us will be over there doing our thing. Of course, I'll be running more of that advertisement on my various channels. So remember, and I know a lot of you always call up saying, okay, Kevin is. listen to me carefully. Next week, Saturday, and the week after, I will not be in the studio. I will not be on the island. I will be out doing ministry, all right? So I thank you as usual for your support. God bless you, and may you have an awesome weekend.